Okay, uh, my book is The Universe vs. Alex Woods by Gavin Exence. It's 407 pages long, and I read a little past 250. So the book starts off by Alex at the age of 17. He's driving a car, and he gets pulled over by an officer, and he is found with 113 grams of weed in his car and um, Mr. Pedersen's ashes in the passenger seat. Um, so then he is taken into custody by the cops and he's taken into a small room where um, he is you know asked questions about the incident and why he had so much weed in his car and um, the cops didn't believe a word of what he was saying because they thought he was like on weed and they thought he was high and they didn't believe anything so since the book is in first person point of view he starts explaining the whole story and how everything began so it starts at the age of 10. He was in his bathroom and a meter ride hit his head and he was in a coma for 13 days. Uh, everyone thought he was gonna die, but he actually made it alive. And he was left with epilepsy. Um, he spent a year without going to school. He stayed home school because of his epileptic fits and like he would have seizures and everything. So he wasn't allowed to go to school. And then a year passed and then he was finally able to return and um, when he returned because his mom was a fortune teller and she didn't really spend like you know much time and everyone it was a really small town so everyone kind of knew what his mom did so he got bullied a lot even though it wasn't physically it was like a lot of like mental bullying and then one day it got like really like serious and like the kids who bullied him started chasing him and he landed at mr Pedersen's house where he broke his uh greenhouse his mom came over then and then they started discussing about how he needed to fix it. So she made a deal with Mr. Pedersen that he would come over and help him uh, do chores. Um, that actually never happened. He came over, but him and Mr. Pedersen just became friends. And like, that's what the next like whole quarter of the book talks about, like just them being friends. And then, so Mr. Pedersen pretty much just became his like new fatherly figure. And then while he was like, that year he didn't go to school because of his um, epileptic bits um he did a lot of reading and he studied a lot of like outer space and like meteorite stuff because of like that's what happened to him and like it really intrigued him and he really wanted to learn about the universe and that was something him and mr Pedersen had in common so yeah they started a book club and then um yeah that's where the 250 pages and like them starting the book club all right um so is the book like is it based on a true story no, this is a fiction book. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you like most about the book so far? Uh, what I like mostly about the book is... Um, I like how it's like really... Even though it's a fiction book, it has a lot of like real life scenarios. Mm -hmm. And I like how he didn't need to have like... I don't know. I like how Mr. Pedersen became that fatherly figure. So yeah, that's where the book ends. That's where the 250 pages end. Alright, well... Um, what does Alex learn? Um, Alex learns, uh, how to get along with others since that was something he struggled with. Uh, he learned how to, um, you know, get along with that fatherly figure. And while he was in his epileptic stage, he learned a lot about the universe and a lot about, um, meteoroid and like a lot of scientific stuff. He was like really into science. Um, how was Alex and Mr. Peterson, like, how do they form a bond? Was a bond between them? Uh, at first, there wasn't supposed to be a bond because he was supposed to get punished for having broken his greenhouse. But um, since his mom kind of forced Mr. Patterson to give him a punishment, mm -hmm. but pretty much when he came over to do chores, which was what he was originally going to do, they just started talking. And then he started, you know, talking to him about um, the books he read while his um, epileptic stage, and they just yeah, they just became really good friends. Uh, what is your least favorite part of the book? My least favorite part of the book is I don't like how a lot of the parts are like really unclear. Mm -hmm. Like I still, um, I read a little past it too. So like I kind of, it almost talks about how Mr. Patterson is like passing or something like that. I don't know. So it's like, it's a really confusing book because it's not really to the point. Like it's, it gives really like weird scenarios. All right, well, the book I read is Percy Jackson, The Son of Neptune, and it's the second book in the series because I already read the first one. 
Um, it's about 510 pages, and I've read 270 to 60 so far. Uh, so the book starts off uh, at Percy's like brainwashed. He doesn't remember anything because in the previous book he was kidnapped and he was brainwashed. So it starts off in this book. It starts off he's running from two monsters and he can't kill them and they can't kill him either because uh, he has a mark of the Achilles, which means that like his skin is like invincible. It's like thick iron. But there's like one weak spot and they can't find it but they can't die also because no matter how much times percy kills them they turn to dust but they keep reforming and the reason for that is because uh the the gateway of death is open by gaia who's the god of earth or goddess of earth something like that but it's open and that's bad because that means like all the monsters that were dead are resurrecting and all the monsters right now can't die and since she controls that, if they kill, like, for example, Percy, like, they can trap him in there. So, but in the beginning, they didn't know that part yet until later. So as he, uh, Percy's running from them, he stumbles upon Juno, who is a goddess. And Juno leads him into a Roman camp, which uh, Juno 